In this video, we're going to review amplitude and period, how to calculate it, but also two new things called phase shift and vertical shift. We're going to actually just deal with how to calculate it and the symbols that are used to represent it. We're going to deal in a later video on how to graph those given that information. But first, we're just going to start with how to calculate it. Now, first, our equation, our baseline equation has changed here to add some more letters. So now we have instead of y equals a sine b theta, and that is, yes, supposed to be theta. Instead of just a sine b theta, we now have a sine b theta plus c in parentheses, then plus d. So there's this thing being added in the parentheses and then something being added outside of the parentheses. And so what will happen is anything that's put in here with the variable inside the parentheses will affect our phase shift. So C is gonna affect our phase shift. And then anything we add to the outside, we're just adding to the whole thing. If we add something, we are gonna lift it up. And if we subtract something, we're gonna pull it down. So that's gonna be a vertical shift. Okay, and so that's uh, C is going to affect our phase shift, D is going to affect our vertical shift. So I'll show you how this works. Down here we have our equation. So A is amplitude from previous videos, and tau, which is the period, is 2 pi divided by B. And now we have this new symbol called phi. Um, it's also a Greek letter, just another one, and this represents the shift. It's a horizontal shift, it's called the phase shift when we're talking about waves. And this is negative. C over B. Don't forget the negative there. That's important to remember. So negative C divided by B is our phase shift. And then last, and my head's in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see, right, 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 right here. Whatever D is, that's how much we shift up or down. So um, there we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to start just by looking at some examples and calculating. So here we go. Um, let's start with this one here. If I go up to this equation here, y equals two sine three theta minus pi plus one, I notice immediately A is two, and B, that's gonna be in front of theta, that's three, okay, All right? And then minus pi, now since this is plus C and this is minus, that minus is important here, so our C is negative pi. And then lastly, what's outside the parentheses? So plus one, so that's what D is, plus one. All right, let, let's go down to this uh, formula here at the bottom. And, and here we see that you don't see A, but this A is being multiplied to cosine, and the number that you multiply by and nothing changes is one. So it's like one cosine theta, okay? If there is no C or no D, then those numbers are zero because those are adding. And if you add nothing, that nothing changes. So A and B, if they're not there, they're one, because if when you multiply by one, nothing changes. But when there's nothing there for C and D, C and D are zero. B here would then be, this is theta over two, it's dividing by two, so that's one half. Okay? Dividing is like multiplying by the reciprocal, so B is one half. C here is, well, it's a minus, so negative pi over two, and then D here looks to be negative two, because it's a minus two. Okay, so there we go, we've identified A, B, C, and D. Now from here, we can already tell what the amplitude and the vertical shift is. Amplitude is two, and the vertical shift is one. Amplitude is one, vertical shift is negative two. Now we have to use some formulas to determine anything horizontally. So the period we've done in the past, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it here, I'm gonna put tau is two pi over B, and B in this case is three. And there we go, two pi over three, that doesn't reduce, so two pi over three. Let's go down here, same thing. Two pi divided by one half. And like we've said many, many times, when you divide by a fraction, you're multiplying by its reciprocal. So instead of two pi divided by one half, we get two pi times and then we flip that over, which when you flip over one half, you get two. So two pi times two is four pi. And then phase shift is negative C over B. So here I look at C, C is negative pi. So if I want negative C over B, then the opposite of negative pi is positive pi. And then divided by three, which is B. So the opposite of C divided by B. That's what phase shift is. So if I go down here, if I want phase shift, Okay, I'm gonna to have to take the opposite of C, which is pi over two, positive, and then I'm gonna to have to divide it by B, which is one half. But remember, 
dividing, you're dividing by a fraction, you're multiplying by the reciprocal. So take pi over two, and this is divided by one half. So that's the same as pi over two times two over one. And as soon as I do that, hopefully you see that those twos are gonna cancel and you're just left with pi over one or just pi, okay? So my phase shift here is pi. All right, so now I have everything. And, and here I have amplitude of two, I have a period of two pi over three, I have a phase shift of pi over three, and I have a vertical shift of one. And then down here, I have an amplitude of one, a period of four pi, a phase shift of uh, pi, and then a vertical shift of negative two. And now here's where it gets a little complex. How do we then graph it? Well, that is what the next video is all about.